Hey guys, I'm Will Patterson. I'm a hand letterer, a YouTuber, a logo designer, and I'm today making a video all about brush calligraphy. This is the second part of the brush lettering video, which is from a course that is coming out later on this year, and the links are in the description for more information. But today I'm gonna to be showing you how to actually write lowercase letters of a brush calligraphy alphabet, and it'll make it easy for you to get started and maybe teach you a few little techniques that I've picked up along the way. All the links to the products are in the description below, so you can click on there and get them from Amazon. Let's jump right into it. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Will Patterson here again with another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you the ways of using a brush pen in more detail than the last video I gave you. You guys really liked the last video and stuff like that. So in this one, I'm gonna be showing you more detail how to use the brush pen and actually create some letter forms for yourself. So last time I showed you some of the brush pens that I use and the different types of brush pens. Uh, and this time I'm gonna show you the ones that I'm using which are relatively new to me, but I found them to be the best ones I've found yet and they're getting more popular. These are called the Kurutake pocket brush pens. And basically I haven't got a black one. I thought I'd be getting a black one, but I don't. It's just these uh, blue ones and different, uh, different colored ones. But these are really, really good. They keep the shape and the form, which is what you want to look for in a brush pen. Otherwise, you'll just have a bit of mess um, when the sort of tip files down. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So I'm going to be using these. The link is in the description below if you want to go and buy them through Amazon, uh, which helps me out as well. Um, so go and check them out. They're very cheap. And yeah, I'm going to be using the blue one today and I'm going to show you how to generate different line weights and different drills that you can uh, sort of utilize to get better at different line weights. Now, as you know, that on the upstroke, when we're actually pushing up, we're actually using no pressure whatsoever. So we're getting these relatively thin lines on the push up. But when we come back down, these lines get thicker. Now the great thing about these pens, like the Kurotaki ones, is that when you push down and when you push up, we're getting consistent line weights, very consistent. And that means that the, the, the brush typography in the end is gonna look so much better. So a little drill for you to do, I'm gonna turn this paper because um, it helps my angle. But a little drill that you can do to actually help um, with this pressure and off pressure is to uh, do some eyes. Now, I know a lot of other people do this, but I'm gonna show you. So just here, I'm gonna bring up a tiny bit, bring down hard, up, down, up, down. I'm on an angle here, but you can see that the actual lettering is up to the right here on a, so I don't know what degree of an angle it is, but it's, it's sort of on that, you know, that cursive angle. And I get that by just twisting my paper around, and making sure that I'm going up and down straight like that. So a little drill to do is just to go up and down, up and down, but without taking your brush off the paper, um, unless you need to move your hand that is. And as you keep going, you'll work out if you just do this, dark down, up, down, up, you'll create an N. So something I mentioned really quickly in the last video was how each letter form is based off another letter form in the alphabet, as in they're all very consistent with each other, which makes it a hell of a lot easier for us to actually go ahead and use the brush pen. By that, I mean that an I is basically just a line down and a thin line up. This is the connector part, but an N is also a line down and a thin part up, but then another line down, and another thin part up. So you can see that the N is technically just two eyes, one of them is joined both ways, and you can see that that works really well there. With the letter O, it's a bit difficult because we're having to create two different line weights in one continuous stroke in a circle, and it takes a lot of practice to get the muscle memory to do this correctly. But there's a few ways you can do this. To actually get the proper O, which is this one here, you start off up, bend round, and then come back up slowly. And you can do that and you can keep practicing it on paper if you wanted to. And that's how I learned how to do the O. And it becomes part of a lot of letters like D, A, G. So practicing the letter O actually really helps uh, with the whole of the rest of the artwork that we're creating. 
So that's basically the idea and the premise behind brush lettering. It's about the thicks and the thins and how we create those thicks and thins. And it's all about consistency. So I'm gonna take you through the alphabet a little bit just down here to save paper, save the environment and all that sort of stuff. And I'm gonna take you through the lowercase alphabet here. And I don't know if I'll speed it up, but you, you should be able to see it. There's an A. Now a B is a bit different, but we can do this in a couple of different ways. We've got a big line here. I'm going to bring it back up and down. And a C is part of an O. Uh, a D is an O again, but with another thing. An E is sort of like an O, but we come around like this. And then an F. It depends how you want to do an F. I always uh, struggle with uh, the ways to do it, but um, a lot of people do it like this. F. A G is with an O as well. And a H is with a sharp line down, it's basically an N, but with a sh like a really thick line going up. Then an I is just there, like so, with a little thing on top. And a J could just be this, and you can have it popping up there. A K, like this, an L. I'm not doing this very uniformly, I'm just trying to show you the uh, patterns that I'm creating here. An M, an N, an O, a P, a Q, an R. Now, the letter R is a bit different towards uh, brush lettering and sort of calligraphy in general because instead of going the standard R, which is sort of like this, where we have a line down and thin line up, you can do this, but normally we go ahead and do the old school R, which is looking sort of like that, which is a thick line here, coming down to a thin and then back to a thick. And there's so many different ways people do this sort of a line, but for me, I'll just keep it simple for you guys and just like this. And to, to really get it in, it looks like a three, you could do it like a three if you wanted to, but really have fun with it. It's just probably another difficult letter form to uh, really get the hang of. Another one that's difficult is the letter S. Now the letter S has always been a bit of a pig for me because I always make it look like the R. So if I was to do an R here and an S here, it's it's a bit difficult because of the connectors. So I don't know how I'd put an R and S together. Shrade, shrade, srab. I just put sh srab, it's not even a word. But that is how I put an S and an R together. There, but an S is basically just like a normal S. You can like have lots of fun with this and I would guarantee you if you just to spend lots of time on an S uh, doing different ways of doing it, then you would come up with a, something probably pretty cool. The letter T is fairly simple as well. There's not really much going on with it. So it basically runs like this, just a, a line here and you can do this line through it or you can just do a normal straight line through it. The U is basically just two lines like this. You can see how it's just two eyes literally together. And a V is a bit different, but we can do this. Um, a V could be, you know, flourished as it's called at the end, like to have that sort of flourish at the end. A W is basically two Vs together or two Us if you wanted to, but I would do this or this or I just keep it going like that. An X, I normally just do a normal standard X, but you can do different things. A Y is basically an I with a long part here, the same as the G. Uh, the letter Z is a lot different to what we would normally write. Normally we'd write sort of something like this as a letter Z, but in calligraphy terms, especially brush calligraphy, we have a lot of lee room to play with this and it's sort of like the letter R, which is like this. So if I was to write pizza, which uh, that is the way that we write it. I mean, I haven't done it very much justice there, so I'll go ahead and give you another preview. Like so. And that's the letter Z.
Now that I've sort of shown you the alphabet, you can go and have a look back at this alphabet if you wanted to, if you think that it'll help you with uh, like getting your letter forms correctly. But now it's time to do some drills. And you've heard, probably seen the drill on Instagram where people write the word minimum. So that's just because it helps with the consistent lines. Uh, so depending on how you write it, um, you have different effects to it, minimum. It's quite difficult to execute sometimes as well. Um, but what you want to have in this situation is this to all look consistent in the angle it's been written in and also in the, the same shapes as the other one. You could also go aluminium. Alu. Min. E. Um. Or, well, I just want to make sure I've spelt this right. <laughs> Minute, yeah, I spelled it right. Um, but that's another way of doing it, of keeping consistent line weights and stuff. You can also spell anticipation because it's got a lot of circle -y parts in it. Or anticipate. Run out of paper there for a sec. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just flourishing with the, uh, the top parts and stuff. So you can see there that there's so many different drills we can do. My best advice would be not to just go ahead with these squiggly lines the whole time or like, you know, try and go up and down, but it's to actually just practice each letter form as you've learned it. If you were to practice each one properly, if you're wondering what paper I'm using, it's actually a dotted piece of paper. Uh, it's a pad that people use for writing. It's really good paper and it's really cheap and it's by a company called Rodia, uh, as you can see here. And it's basically just uh, really good for calligraphy, uh, brush lettering, and it's really cheap. It's like five pounds for this whole pad and it goes and lasts for ages. And you know, it's a proper notepad uh, for you to use. And so the link in the description is there. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time with another video. Have a great day.